I wonder what they're like. From our viewpoint, Professor, they're either superhuman or subhuman. Out there in the Twitchiverse and YouTubeiverse, respectively. It is Wednesday night, which means that something's going on, and that something is Pauper. Uh, you know we love doing Pauper around here. If you're catching this on YouTube, we do this every time the midweek magic is offered. We also do pop up video, as you're familiar. If you're watching this on Twitch live, hi, hello there, welcome on in. I am Max, this is Sam. Hello. And we're going to play the aforementioned Pauper. For this YouTube portion, I'm going to run through a few games with um, some mask and see how it does. I have the kind of proven out green-white shell. This one I'm testing Cyber Cryptomancer in. Uh, I just think mask is very good. And I think it's pretty uh, flexible and it's a hard deck to answer. It's so unique. I think it does keep the format in check. I do think that Ancestral Mask is a problematic card for the format. I don't know about the ban hammer on it. I, it's so hard to say. How do you feel about Ancestral Mask? I like it. You like it? Yeah, it's kind of like the um, it's kind of like the Bogles, right? The same premise, yeah. yeah. It's the Bogle deck for this format. You don't think it's too good for this format? I haven't seen you play it very much, so I'm not sure. I think my opinion of it is it makes you kind of either try... You have to have a strategy in mind to beat it. I didn't like playing against it. Right. That's kind of the problem, <laughs> right? Is you need to have some kind of a strategy in mind to take care of it. And otherwise you're going to get run over, and that makes it rough. So it is a tough deck to deal with. I think that the control decks, having to run main board answers to enchantments is kind of rough. Or like main board hand disruption mm -hmm. can just be bad if you're playing against a more aggressive archetype. And this is a best of one format, and I truly think that's the problem, is you don't have sideboards to fix things. So that tends to be a little problematic. So next turn we'll probably Heliod's Pilgrim, unless we natural an Ancestral Mask or something, or a setup -y piece. I would take a Setessin, um Tactics in this draw step, not trying to be fussy or anything. Looks like they have some kind of a fight spell or something, maybe a Prey Upon. Could be just a Shock. They could just be... Looks like they're itching to kill the Jungleborn Pioneer. I'm not sure why. Another Heliod's Pilgrim. Wait, we need Blue, but not desperately. But we'll name Blue. So that just gives us pretty much every color we could possibly need. Um, We'll go ahead and Heliod's Pilgrim, I believe. I think that's probably better than Commune with Spirits into Talons of Wildwood. I think it's just a more direct path to victory. Opponent's not holding up a, con like a, a uh, counter spell here. Spell Pierce doesn't get Heliod's Pilgrim. There's no one mana answer to creatures in the format. We have one, two enchantments out right now, so I think the mask is just the grab. I don't think we need to beat around the bush about that. I accidentally got a little clicky. What do you mean? Huh? What do you mean? I was like overclicking the auto pass button. Oh. So I was like, auto pass, un auto pass. <laughs> but I don't know if. Uh, <laughs> Like red green, jewel thief's gonna exactly do it against us. Fine, taking the hit here. I just want to be able to pad myself out from an edict effect. Not that I really think they're gonna run one here. Our, our bigger concern is artifact or enchantment hate. So we do need to be aware of that. Cryptomancer doesn't save us from that. 
There's the aforementioned Cryptomancer. I'm going to lead on Kamuma Spirits just because I have the mana for Mask. And again, I don't think they're running counters. They may surprise me. You never know what an opponent might be up to. We'll take the Unbridled Growth. So the question is, do I Unbridled Growth in the Talons of Wildwood? I think the answer is probably yes. I'm not super itchy on the Mask yet. So uh, we'll just toss this on the Tapped Forest because I don't need it right now. And I'll throw Talons on the Hexproof Creature. And I think that should do it for me for the turn. They cannot affect this play based on the colors we've seen. So I see no reason not to do it. The most high priority target to kill is not, in fact, the Jungleborn Pioneer. And if all of you have played the deck before, you're aware, the highest priority target to kill in the mass deck is the spirited companion because it is an enchantment creature so i will get benefit from the ancestral mask for that but they were just looking looks like they were just itching to shock haste toxic three probably should chump block that one probably a swing all out here okay drum on us for 11 it's our turn so we are in a bit of a pickle um, we do have to worry a little bit about getting hit. Can they kill us? It's 10. They can very easily kill us. We can block the 4. We take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They play another Haster. We block. We take 10. They play Haste plus Shock. We're dead. So we do have to be cognizant of that. So should I get something else in that for that reason? Like I could Heliod's Pilgrim for something. I still think we're bottlenecked on mana. So I think we do just kind of have to jam here. Question is, do I swing? Do I have Vigilance? I have Trample and Hexproof. I guess no attacks. Um, we need something. Squire's Devotion off the top would be ideal, but that's the biggest problem I have, I've had with this deck at the moment is just the mana choke point. That's been my biggest issue. It's just I'm so choked on mana fairly consistently. And it looks like they're probably itching to kill Spirited Companion so they can get in for six. Knock me down to five. At that point, I just have to go like Satessin Training into Hope I Top Deck something. Because that'll knock me down to an 8-8, eight, eight, put me back to a 10, 11, 10 Trample. Okay. I think we can leave the Companion... And we just block the atrocity. They can pump this a few times. And they could kill the the merfolk. But that's a lot of pumping. I think they'd be better served trying to pump one of the unblocked creatures. Yeah, Rimrock Knight, you got it. So we're taking an 8 at the moment. Okay. So Rimrock Knight won't do it. They're going to play Aether Chaser, a goodie. Not very good here, but a good card. Our turn. Now the question becomes, do I sack on Bridal Growth to draw a card? I don't think I can afford to. All right, Camino Spirits I will definitely do, because that could get me a Squire's Devotion, in which case I think I can just win here. Okay, or a Mask. Can I win off Mask? So that would give me one, two, three, four, five... One, two, three, four, five, six. So they have four toughness. Ugh, it's a dicey one, but I don't think we're going to do better. 22. And they can block four of it. They do need to block all four of it. Instead of swinging the dog. Quick mass would have got me there. So if we lose, that's on me. GG's. Yep, as a hundred percent a punt. Make sure you count that if you say it. I didn't. I, I have you here for a reason. It, I didn't count it until it was too late. Yeah, you gotta be on top of it. You're here for a reason. 
You're just as I was starting to me. calculate it. I was like, they could block four of it. Yeah, I just didn't think about not. I didn't think about winning in the face of not losing, and that's definitely a common mistake to make. So important lesson there. Lesson learned. We'll do our maths. Um, maths for blockers. Huh? Maths for blockers. I'm just kidding. Well, I, just say what you always say. Um, they go first. I think Commune's going to help us out here, fix our mana. We need to find a creature. So this hand's asking us to do a lot. Opponent goes first, so we get an extra card in here. I'm willing to see what this can do. I mean, that's really the goal here, right, is to test things out. What's new, what's good, what's interesting. So far, if this deck hasn't blown me away. Um, I thought Cyber Crypto would be a lot better, but it perhaps has, what it could have done, and one thing I've been considering is that perhaps it changes the shell of the deck, and now this is more like an aggro control deck. Um, all of these cards are good. I think land is probably the most important one we can grab. Spirit Companion helps, but we can't cast it in our current hand. So I think we just want land so we can get Jungleborn Pioneer down. Looks like we're against White Weenie. It could be a, like a Life Gain style deck. It could just be a White Weenie style aggressive deck. Could also be like a Green White Hexproof deck that's playing Hawk plus Pump Spells. The one negative to this deck is it is very susceptible to removal. Good news for our opponent is we're not playing any because we're focused pretty much entirely on the combo. So, I mean, it's definitely a question of do I make some trims in order to play some more tempo-y kind of stuff. It's an option. I definitely think, like, um, Meeting of Minds is an interesting prospect in a deck like this. I think we're going to lose because we can't get on the ground quick enough. Okay. We have to be very careful with Ancestral Mask because it also counts your enchantments. So we have to be careful about that. Problem is the lifelink's going to be tricky to beat. So they're probably going to grab another mask, I wager. So if we draw... Again, I feel like the key card I keep always coming back to is Squire's Devotion. So maybe I just need to go up on those. But I just feel like the core tension with the deck is just my mana is always so demanding. Like, I always want more. I always want more. Like, I feel like I'm constantly harping on the fact that it's just like, I need more mana. I need more mana. I need more mana. So maybe, like, the Utopia, Urban Utopia needs to be replaced because it's a bit too expensive. The Unbridled Growths looked pretty good. Can't really attack into a 6-6. Six, six. So that's going to be the problem, right? They're going to mask up first, and we're going to lose. Hmm. Yeah, you hate to see the loose line pay off because that definitely shouldn't work. Any other deck, that would have just been a blowout, but that is the downside to Mask in and of itself. Um, so let's go ahead and make some changes while we're doing this because it's important. you got to identify some things and make some changes as needed. So I'm going to go in here and fiddle with this a little bit. I'm not, yeah, I'm not thrilled with the Urban Utopias. I don't think they're very good. Um, I was playing the other white creature that's an enchantment creature. Type in enchantment creature. Okay, arena's clunking. I guess it won't church with just that context. Um, here he is. Transcendent Envoy. Mm -hmm. I like that he flies. The flying is nice, and the auras costing one less is like a mana accelerant. Mm -hmm. So that's a really helpful piece of business. I think the Jade Guardian just needs to come out. I think that we probably... I'm not in love with the Heliod's Pilgrim, so I think I'm going to cut those. And I think I'm just going to go up Land of War Elves. I think that's the direction I want to take it. I maybe could cut... A. So I need to go up probably a white source. Come down probably a blue. And because I want to make sure I try to get that mana down as quickly as I can. Maybe I come down a heath and up a. Or maybe I keep the heath. Go I have one grove. I want the grove though. So maybe I go one and one and I go up a forest because I want to make sure I can hit that green mana on time. Does the heath or grove give you blue? It's whatever color you pick. Okay. It can give me everything. It's one of each thriving land, which isn't the best, but I think I had a weird mixture of them just from wild cards, and it wasn't worth pulling a wild card when I could mostly get what I wanted mm -hmm. out of the ones I have. So, 
I think that's going to be the switch we go with for the minute. A small one, but I think probably an impactful one. We shall see. If you're joining us on YouTube, let us know. Do you want to see more of this pop-up content? Do you want to see less? Do you like the pop-up video format? Um, these we just have to take advantage of because it's so irregular to get um, a pauper event off and running on Arena. So you got to take your uh, advantage of it when you can. Even though it kind of stinks, it's always a midweek magic. So if your schedule doesn't align, you just miss pauper all the time. Unless you're in like the Arena Pauper Discord or something like that. Nobody likes pauper. I was gonna say nobody else is playing. Nobody else. Everybody else is done. Our friend on Artemis Siege isn't even playing. Could get that pair up. Here we go. This is an actual match. Is going to draw out? Draw out. So some kind of a matchmaking error. You snooping around who's live? I'm seeing if CJ was still on. We go first. Double white with a lot of green, so we can't keep that one. Now we're lacking in the way of white, but we can keep six, and I think we can push the envoy here. I think we just want to do this. Maybe I want to fix my mana first, though. That means that I'm going to want to... Yeah, no, I'll see if they have it. Because that's really like, that means I'm really going to want to hold Cyber Cryptomancer for a long time and I want to get that down. So. Hmm, maybe it's that black white deck. Considering they're playing black white land. So I got I Cyber plus called. Omen of the Sea. Um, I think the plan is just going to be to play out Cryptomancer almost as quickly as possible and snap the mask on it next turn if we can. So we're going to run out Crypto, protect our Elf, so we can keep our mana situation up. Okay, that's all it took. Yes, yeah, so then the follow-up would have just been Ancestral Mask, attack, and then the follow-up would have been Omen of the Sea, try to grab something else, and then attack. That's the negative to the midweek magic there. Yeah, there's no stakes, so people will just like insta-scoop, and that's all right. We'll see if this change can be a positive one. So far, I think just the land, the presence of the land of elves speeding up the mana situation, it's pivotal. Like I, the more I the more I play it, the more I am under the steadfast belief that it is pivotal to have the the fast mana that the land of elf provides for sure. So black, red, not a lot of chance of this land of elf surviving. But again, it's not pivotal, and they're spending resources killing our mana producer, which isn't really the crux of our deck. So that's all, like it's not a win, but it's not the end of the world either. They're not proactively putting out a strategy, and they're not dealing with ours. So I think that that's a pretty good thing for us. So we're just going to Jungle Born Pioneer here. And you can see how important this one mana is, right? Like this mana on one gets us a two drop ahead of or gets us a three drop ahead of schedule which is just so good we absolutely need to have it i don't know if this is just goblin beatdowns or not but um i'm not going to fiddle around with it too too much i could go spirited companion into commune with spirits um i could just jam mask i could play another pioneer and take it slow i think that's probably the best bet for us is to do that and then just commune with spirits here just having a multitude of critters is the way we want to play this one. Um, but we do have to watch. That was a risky piece of business that I just did. Uh, because if they wipe our board, we lose both our hexproof creatures. So that was a little loose. I should not have done that. Again, if we get festivaled, or end the festivities, or whatever the card is that deals one to everything. Okay, we're in okay shape then. Probably a sack deck it looks like we're playing against, if I had to guess. Um, I think we'll go ahead and play this out. We'll go ahead and play this out, because we do not want our Hexproof creature to die, so there is a high incentive to want to get it up a little bit in terms of power and toughness. 
Uh, this is the white based one, so I think we probably have name yet. blue. And I will not attack so that I am not getting trade not trading off with uh, three tiny critters. Okay. It looks like some kind of sack deck. We'll see what the payoff is at a point, hopefully. Let's commune with spirits here. Only choice is island. Play island, play companion. Okay. I think we'd rather hold up Omen of the Sea than Envoy here. Uh, we cannot do both. And again, I don't want to trade my Merv. I could get us up to a 7-7. Seven, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I could swing, but I just don't want to risk it. It could be a weird pump spell like an Infuriate or something. I just don't think it's worth risking our game for. And we'll just end the turn here. Omen of the Seal set us up. Hopefully for the next turn we can go Squire's Devotion or Rousing Reed or Satessan Tactics so that we can just jam. Act of Treason, you got it. Definitely a Steel and Sack style deck. You got me. Oh, that was my bad. All kinds of problems tonight. It's okay. We'll do this now. You guys see also the power of the envoy here too, right? So now I'm going to be able to do all this for so little in the way of mana output. Do I just want to get the Envoy down? I guess so. Okay. Let me attack that one is 15. an understandable scoop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, red-black, you're not going to have an answer to that as far along in the, the process as I am. I did leave myself open for that one turn, so that was problematic. It looks a lot better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see how important the Envoy and the Land of War Elf are. Just mm -hmm. those mana sources, I just don't think you can scrimp on them. I like the blue for additional card draw. I just don't know how good it's going to be. I still think the core of the deck is that uh, Jungleborn Pioneer. Another draw out? That's weird. Did it say draw? Not yet. Hmm. Just a little bit of uh, slowness on the on the arena side there. Um, no land of elf this time, but we do have an envoy. We have a commune on first turn, and that's really the key, right? I want a first turn play. If I can first turn play and a second turn play, particularly a mana reducer or a mana source, that's key. All right, so we whiff on elves and pioneer, but we hit Satessan tactics and forest. I think we just want to keep our mana good. We're not going to rely on Envoy Living, right? Like those little drops that are like synergy drops for a deck generally don't survive. So we're not going to count on that being alive for our third turn. No blue yet for Crypto. Green, black, probably an Aristocrat style deck. So a sacrifice value deck like we saw out of the red deck a moment ago. My, turn, my turn's not changing. Oh, you're never around. Now you're all around? Get out of here. Definitely holding some interaction here. I don't mind. If they want to kill our creature, that's kind of what I expected. It doesn't help us by any stretch, but it's fine. They're really in the tank about it. That or they're eating a sandwich. That's one of the two. Why a sandwich, specifically? Uh, it's just what I always say. Oh, okay. I find my best magic is being played while I'm eating sandwiches. Mm, that's, that's not true. true. That's not true. Have you ever had a sandwich while playing Magic? I'm sure I have. Maybe not in paper, but certainly on Arena. Wow, burning an entire, almost an entire rope here for this decision? Wow, wee, that wee. That's not that, that's not, we're not that deep into the game yet. I think that their line's the right one. If they're just holding up removal, wait until I do something sketchy to try to blow me out. If they were cool, be mac and cheese? Oh, wow. Well. I think I would agree with that. Yeah, I can't argue <laughs> with your mac and cheese theory here. So we're suspecting they're on removal. They're presenting zero pressure, so I'm just going to chill. Try to attack them and see if that's enough to provoke them. 
using uh, some kind of removal. Arctic the Dragon, thanks again for popping in the chat there. Appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Jungle Hollow number two. Kind of just waiting for opponent. Like the uh, idea would be is like I was gonna say tap out for something. That was actually tapping out for nothing. They did literally nothing with that. That's pretty crazy. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna. I was like, I'm not really sure how to proceed here. I don't think I. I don't think I want to commit. Pretty good. Um, doing good. I'm playing Pauper. Can't complain. I love me some Pauper. I love the fact that it's on Arena. I think it's a cool format. Uh, even though I am the villain of the format right now playing the mask deck but it's all good appreciate the uh, question but we're going to try some other decks and things right now we're also simultaneously recording a video for YouTube for this deck specifically so we're kind of putting it through its paces we made a couple little alterations I don't know how long you've been hanging but uh, trying it out a little bit more tweaked towards the more traditional green white style i just think cryptomancer is very very strong for this deck a cheap two drop that's hex proof seems insane for the curve a little hard on the mana but i think it's insane nonetheless was that second time wasn't quite that quick from the other player but very close but yeah like you said Midweek magic. a lot of people play the high risk high reward like combo or synergy decks and then they scoop if they don't have a perfect hand. So they'll just scoop five or six games till they get the right hand and then keep and then blow their opponent out. And that's, I guess, how they have fun. I was going to say, I don't understand how that's fun. Like, playing the game is I think playing combos, fun. yeah. <laughs> playing combo decks is fun, but the part of the tension is can you get the combo together? Yeah, not despite what your opponent... just getting it in your opening hand. Yeah, do you want to just cheese your opponent out? Uh, this one I think is a mulligan. This is a little bit better. Uh, keep six, put back to Tessin training number two, I think. We have no target for it. Well, eventually, but I think that the Omen can dig us a little bit deeper, and that's a little bit more valuable. So we're taking it slow, and that's, again, where this deck tends to suffer a little bit. What in the world does this do? I have seen this thing since Streets Limited. Don't tell anybody I was playing Streets Limited once. I think we'll Omen. What is that? Streets of New Capenna. Oh. I hate Streets of New Capenna. And I did play it when it was around and available. Seed of Hope now? What is this deck we're playing against? I love it. Blighted Burgeoning? What is going on? Holy cow, this is exciting. Good call. Well, this time I hopefully they don't uh, act a treason my stuff. But they're going to be all five colors, so who knows what they're up to. I mean, I definitely don't think we argue with this. Maybe not the Unbridled Growth, but certainly the Mask. That's just going to win us a late game, potentially. Okay, Talons is fine. Just going to Jungle Born Pioneer here. Make our critter. I'm hesitant to block. Double strike, huh? I I think they tap out for Blighted Burgeoning here if they're a five color deck. Backup agent. Okay. So now they have a 2-3. Oh, well, they're going to hit me because I'm not going to block it. Because of the Blighted Burging, I'm a little concerned they're not just strictly green-white. So I believe what my play is going to be is going to cast this Land of War Elf, and then I'm going to not attack, but I'm not going to block, so maybe I get the Pioneer in. It's a little less work I have to do on the in the long game. Um, if the Elf survive, which so far it looks like, again, I'm thinking they want this Blighted Burgeoning, but they could just be like, green white make them big there's the blade of burgeoning this lets it tap for any color right an additional one mana of any color okay oh fake me out again i just thought it'd be the save the mana for the transform and they value their backup agent enough to not attack with it there interesting you figure that my two creatures are a little bit more high value target so i can talons I think the answer is going to be Envoy. I have it floating. <laughs> Arena. Is 
Seven seven coming in hot. Probably gets chumped by that by that backup agent they politely did not attack with. And we have a two two, and a one two in the air here. And our next turn play is pretty straightforward. It's going to be mask into Satessan training if we're allowed. Another blighted burgeoning here. They can have double transform. I don't know if they tap mana though. Huh, what is this, this is a weird deck? deck? <laughs> yeah, I'm not precisely sure what we're trying to accomplish here. Could just be a newer player with playing with their commons. That's totally an understandable thing to be doing. They can untap of a land here with Blade of Burgeoning on it. I thought they were going to pick just a normal forest for a second. No, don't do that. You can transform. <laughs> I shouldn't be trying to help the opponent, but. Um. Yeah, sure, I'll block. If you have a trick, you got me. I'm just willing to save two life. I don't want to put myself in a position where I'm really struggling. It's atmosphere green and place a test and training on this. So we get a card. Give us a little bit more information. I think you need a mask. Oh, we're going to mask for sure. We're going to save up uh, well, I guess Cyber Crypto doesn't really do much here. We have a 26 25, and they can block, they can block five of it. Five, yeah. Just showing me that they are, in fact, tapped out. Is this a reach? No. Whenever it's a tree, I look. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. I'm going to have to take 22. All right, we got him. All right, so I think we've worked out the, a few of the kinks. I still think it's going to need some refining, but I do think the mask deck, unfortunately, sad to report, still as good as ever. I think the cryptomancers are worth trying to parse out. I think Unbridled Growth is one of your best. It gets played in the Bogles deck in actual Paper Pauper, so I really think that's one of the better choices you have for the deck. But that will do it for the YouTube part of this. So if you're watching us on YouTube, do all those YouTube things. We really do appreciate it. It means a lot. It helps us tremendously. And big thanks to everybody who's been supporting us. We've seen a big spike in viewership and interaction. And man, we really appreciate it. it really means a lot. So thank you for that. If you're joining us on Twitch, we're going to keep going with other decks. So don't forget, on YouTube, twitch.tv slash superliminalfilms will get you there. And we will see you on the next video, or perhaps live. Bye.